You guys ready to tackle a brand new problem? If you want to code along, make sure to hit the link in the description below. It's time to pop our daily dose of code. Hey guys, this next question is one that looks really simple. That's been the case with a lot of problems recently, but has a strange twist to it. It's titled Rotate Matrix, and let's just head straight into it. You are given an N by N matrix. You must rotate it to the right by 90 degrees. One of the shortest problem statements I've ever seen. This is how it looks before rotation. This is how it looks after rotation. And all modifications must play, take place on the same matrix. You can't create a new matrix. It should all take place only in the one you get as an input. Now, as we can see, our input is first three. Those are the dimensions of the matrix. N by N means it's a three by three matrix. This is the matrix itself. And our output is how it looks after it's been rotated. Now let's take a closer look. There's not much to explain here. Let's imagine I were able to pull out this matrix and hold it in my hand. Now, if I simply rotate it to the right, rotated it clockwise by 90 degrees, I'd get this matrix. That's because once I rotate it to the right, the one right here will now go here. The two right here will now go here and so on. So guys, I'll leave it open. If you want to code it, you know what to do. Click the link in the description below. And if you want to watch me solve it, just stick around. I'll be dropping a few hints as well along the way. Now guys, some general advice for solving questions like these is to figure out where, what the mapping of each element or what the coordinates of each element are before and after it's been transformed. So before one has been transformed, its coordinates are zero, zero. After it's been transformed, its coordinates are zero, two. Let's do it for a few more elements as well. Map two and three out as well. We can see their coordinates before and after transformation. Now, normally these help us glean some sort of pattern, which we can use in order to solve the question. Do you see any pattern? Just have a look at these numbers. We'll be back quickly. Now take a look at this clip right here. The two matrices on the left and right are the exact same matrix. So let's say we're talking about this element right here, this element. It's defined by its row and column. We'll denote rows in red and columns in blue. Let's just consider the column. We know that our very first element is going to be zero, zero, which is why that's going to be our reference point. Now, once we turn, the matrix by 90 degrees to the right, what we can see is the column transforms into the row. The distance from 0, 0 is the same for the column and the row, which is why after a transformation or after turning the matrix, an element's column in the first matrix becomes its row in the second matrix. Now let's have a look at the row. We can see its distance from the origin point right here. Once we turn it, its distance from the right is the same. However, our origin point is on the left, which is why its row does not get simply converted into the column. Rather, its column value is n minus 1 minus its row value. It's because we're not taking its distance from the right. Rather, its distance from the left. Now, each time we visit an element, we can perform four transformations. That's because we know these four elements are going to be cyclically shifted. So once we iterate through our first row, we're going to transform each of these elements four times, meaning our entire outer box has been covered, has been rotated. Now what have we got to do? We've got to go and rotate our inner boxes. So we go into our inner box. Now J doesn't run from zero to N. Rather, it runs from I to N minus one minus I. And we go on until I hits n by two. The moment the number of rows hits n by two, we've transformed every single box. Now, another way you could solve it, if you take a look at your screen, is by just mapping out a few elements and seeing if they follow some sort of pattern. So let's have a look at element one, two, and three. So straight off the bat, we can tell that the column has been transformed into the row. And the column of the transform matrix is n minus one minus the row. 
Now that's a hypothesis, which we'll have to test with a few more elements. If we have a look at six, six's position in the array is one, two. If we were to follow the rules we just wrote, two would become its row and its column would become two minus one, that's one. So the position in the transform matrix would have to be two, one, which it follows right here. Now let's have a look at the coding bit of it. Now our first index is going to be ARR of IJ. Now if we find its corresponding position in the transformed array, that's going to have the same row as was the column before, but its column is going to be n minus one minus the row count of the one in the original array. Similarly, the following element, since they're going to be four elements and we've only tackled two, we've got to tackle two more. So the following element is going to have these coordinates. The column simply gets copied into the row and the new column is simply going to be n minus one minus the original row count. And we've got to perform this one more time. And these lines do what we've just discussed. They swap the four cyclic elements to the right by 90 degrees. Now let's see if this code actually works. Let's hit submit first compile and test. Our sample test case have been passed, a good sign. Once we hit submit, every single test case has been accepted. So guys, that's how you solve the problem, rotate matrix. If you liked it, make sure to hit the golden trio, like, subscribe, and the bell icon. And make sure to leave your comments, your thoughts down below. It's been Vivek Kolur, guys. Pleasure solving this problem for you. And I'll see you next time.